Frame Raider. You know what's the best thing about going out to eat as a kid in the 2000s, other than it being free because your parents paid for it? It was getting a toy with your meal, of course. While getting toys in your fast food meals is still an ongoing thing, it seems to be more cheap than ever. Maybe I'm missing something here, I've never been an Arby's guy per se, but when I saw those Cuphead toys, all I could think was, well that seems a bit cheap. Did they actually create a cursed thirst render for this promotion? Oh my gosh. Before the pandemic took over, I recall noticing the families, once finishing their meal, would have their attention brought back to their phones. The toy that came with it might distract them for 30 or so seconds, but then it was always back to what they were doing. We never had that massive world of entertainment in our hands in the 2000s, so a toy with a meal was far more exciting. Especially if you had parents like mine who would sit and read the newspaper for like 20 minutes after finishing, leaving us kids with nothing really to do. Even though I might be making these old kids' meal toys sound great, besides the gradually decreasing production quality, they aren't too dissimilar from what comes out today. However, what if I told you that even in the 2000s you might have seen us kids glued to our screens? How is this possible before modern day technology, you may ask? Well, this is all thanks to our parents' PDAs. <laughs> this is great! Also, sometimes our kids' meal would include an LCD game based on a trending property. I've had a couple people actually reach out to me saying that these LCD games were their introduction to Sonic, and to that I say, well, their plan sure worked then, didn't it? Now, before I go any further, I should clear something up. I don't mean to say all kids' meal toys are low quality now. From what I've seen over the past few years, so long as you're going to McDonald's, the toys are still pretty decent. McDonald's can afford it, I guess. But you sure don't see places like Burger King making that effort anymore. Remember how big of a role they used to play in all this? In this LCD game I have here, since the Sonic one doesn't work anymore, you move this plate back and forth to land the falling burgers on. The burgers weren't actually falling though, it was just giving the illusion of them falling by lighting the right sprites up at the right time. Also, this is a bit of a deviation from Activision's original Kaboom, which was a guy in jail trying to escape by dropping bombs which you had to catch so they wouldn't explode. The name Kaboom doesn't really work anymore in this port. I guess they were trying to censor it for kids, which is funny because I'm pretty sure even the original was kind of for kids. An Activision anthology on the PS2 includes it, and it's rated E. As I said a moment ago, my Sonic handheld doesn't work anymore. This isn't because it's broken, but because the battery died. These things were powered by tiny cell batteries that, upon losing their energy, pretty much rendered these things as paperweights. You can open and change the battery yourself, but the accessibility of this will depend on the handheld. At the least, they always seem to require triangle head screwdrivers to open, one of the more obscure screw heads to my knowledge, so I don't think they really wanted you to expand the life of them. Kinda strange since there were never any other paid substitutes if you wanted to keep playing these games past that. Well, I mean, there is eBay, but then the cycle just repeats. Plus, these days the batteries in those things are likely close to dead anyhow, even if brand new. Now, these are by no means the first instances of handheld LCD games. I'm sure you're aware of the mass amount of products Tiger came up with in the 90s. If you want to get even further into the past, comparisons can be made to Nintendo's own Game & Watch handhelds. It became a bit of a bandwagon for some time, so much so that even some obscure companies would go to try their hand at it. There are actually some great ones out there. Few and far between, I know, but they do exist. These things weren't franchise-specific, but the usual suspects in this case were definitely McDonald's and Burger King. Of course, these were usually related to video games. That, or sports activities for some reason. Would you believe there existed an Xbox set of LCD games and specially marked boxes of Kellogg's cereal? Get them hooked young and they'll come back for the Xbox 720. I'm still waiting, Microsoft. Well, it was a better name than the Xbox One. This was around that same time when Burger King did their infamous King games for the Xbox 360. Burger King really got their game on in 2006. Now, hear me out, I can't be the only one, right? Who, upon getting a Happy Meal, would instantly flip over the bag to read where next month's toy set was teased to us. And if it was video game related, I'd always be anticipating more little LCD games. But then once they came around, if they weren't, well, I'd be a little upset. Today there's really no question. Whatever next month's toys are, whether they be game related or not, they're more than likely not electronic. Unless they have a voice box in them, I guess. From what I can tell, these things have never shown up again in kids' meals since the late 2000s. They were short-lived in retrospect, but that didn't stop a good number of these from showing up in that window of time. I only still have two of them, unfortunately. Not sure why these two in particular, since I had like a dozen or more the last I checked. This Sonic one says it's from 2003. The Activision Kaboom game says it's from 1981, but let's not kid ourselves here, because there's no way this tech would be given away for free in a 1981 kid's meal. That date actually reflects the original Kaboom game rather than this LCD toy. Really weird they put those original dates on the back of these instead, but nonetheless, on research, it appears to be a set from 2005. So this actually got me thinking, what were the first and last instances of these LCD games being sold with food for kids? And who was actually responsible for these in the first place? Was it some kind of tech company branding deal? Well, yes. Researching the first set of these LCD kids meal games brought me to an announcement that Fisher Price actually teamed up with Sega in 2003 in order to create this famous set as to be given away with a Happy Meal at McDonald's as a promotional item for the release of Sonic Adventure DX on the Nintendo GameCube. 
This set is fairly interesting too, they have strange regional variations, and were succeeded by a similar set the following year as Sega's way to celebrate McDonald's 25th anniversary of the Happy Meal. There was even a 2.5k giveaway for 25 lucky winners, of which my buddy L Supersonic Q did a video on his channel. Check that out if you're interested. Nonetheless, the prior information is all the proof we need that the Sega Mini Video Game set was the first of these 2000s Kids Meal LCD games. The latest set I was able to find was something called Digisports, which came out in 2008. That's surprisingly late for this kind of thing. Before looking this up, I had no idea these things were still in production at that time. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find out if Fisher-Price was indeed responsible for all of these Kids Meal LCD games, but I do think they were, for a couple of reasons. Firstly being that they all came out within a similar time period. Secondly, they all have an incredibly similar feel to them. Generally, I can spot the differences between a Tiger LCD game and a, well, not Tiger LCD game. Here I feel the same way, but with the Kids Meal LCD games. The real question is, what happened for them to stop making an appearance? My guess is they probably cost a lot more to make compared to the traditional plastic non-electronic toys that Kids Meals were otherwise familiar with. Hypothetically, these restaurants would decide it just wasn't worth it anymore since toys and meals were becoming less popular, as personalized electronic devices were becoming far more popular. Likely the same reason why a lot of these fast food companies, like Burger King, stopped with the mainstream toy production as a whole. As a trip down memory lane, I wanted to see if I could identify each set of these LCD games and kids' meals. So in 2003, Sega released their first set of LCD games based on Sonic the Hedgehog, with the one oddball inclusion of a Super Monkey Ball-inspired game, which was a Sega series that premiered around this time. These were very simple games. I think in each case they would feature either a two-character sprite jumping game, or three-character sprite side-to-side -side game. Usually it was a game of collecting items that would show up, but there were deviations like Knuckles Soccer or Sonic Speedway. So you know how my Sonic handheld's battery died? Interestingly enough, I came across this site, oneswitch.org.uk, that offers individual units with power input via some type of millimeter jack cable. Seems like at the moment, the site only supports the Shadow Grinder and... Sonic Action Game? That's what they called this one? You even got a snarky callback to an old Game Gear game with Tails Sky Patrol, yet you call this Sonic Action Game? Well, alright then. The following year in 2004 came the second LCD set, again from Sega. These days you're probably more familiar with these from the infamous Pakistan commercials that leaked online. I don't have any of these anymore, I do remember having the full set though at one point. I recall them being slightly more advanced, more than just going from one side of the screen to the other, but they were still very simple as they used identical technology. The games would start pretty slow but gradually increase in speed as waves. This would often be determined by showing something on screen, like a flag, as shown in this example of Tails Sky Adventure. I'm sure you noticed that particular sound bite. That was a pretty universal sound to my recollection, used to indicate that things were about to speed up. Like the last set, it had an oddball out being the Billy's Giant Egg game which focused on Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. Again, a game that came out around that time. One of these was more successful than the other. The same year came another LCD set, but this time it wasn't Sega, it was Crash Bandicoot. I guess the publishers of Crash took notice to the successful idea of Sega's, and pioneered Fisher-Price to do the same kind of thing for them. This led to another really weird Pakistan commercial that doesn't get nearly as much attention as the Sonic one. Again, in 2004, McDonald's had this weird ESPN-inspired set. I'm not sure who was responsible for making this a thing, but probably McDonald's themselves, to be honest, since that doesn't seem entirely unlike them if you're aware of McDonald's desire to include themselves in other mediums. I think this strange set pretty much solidified the idea of LCD handheld games and kids' meals, because from then on for a couple of years, these things were everywhere. After all, the same year came Burger King's debut with their NFL LCD games. I had most of these, but I remember absolutely nothing about them. Just goes to show how forgettable they were. What followed, though, was probably the smartest thing Burger King could have done to make up for it. More or less porting Atari 2600 Activision classics. That's the set my earlier Kaboom toy was from, by the way. How do you beat some of the greats from the Atari 2600 library? Well, McDonald's then got a new set of Crash Bandicoot and Spyro games the following year in 2005. Were they better? Eh, not really, but far more recognizable at the time. I had most of these and they were pretty much on par with the Sonic LCD games before them. Except these ones came in a weird kind of booklet packaging. Almost like you're supposed to sit these beside your actual PlayStation 2, GameCube, or Xbox games. Then came Burger King's next set, which as far as I can tell was their last, the US figure skating set. Then there were the 2007 Kellogg's LCD set, which focused on Xbox to promote the 360 console. Shortly after came their Guitar Hero LCD games, which were far less popular. I think by this time the LCD handheld fad was starting to wear out. The last known set I could find any information on was this Digisports set from 2008. The saturation of this market was probably what caused it to fall out of the public attention. For some reason these things began to focus on sports, which I guess makes sense since even the Sonic LCD games could be compared to emulations of sport game concepts, but what they failed to understand was the pushing force behind these. The colorful mascots and marketable characters. Faceless brands like ESPN, US Figure Skating, and even Xbox aren't as appealing to kids as Sonic the Hedgehog and Crash Bandicoot, especially back then. 
By 2009, more and more people had other means of entertainment while enjoying their food. So ended the handheld LCD kids meal toys. And to be honest, these started to disappear from marketplaces as a whole. In the 2010s and onward, these things didn't appear to be nearly as common to even find on the store shelves. Maybe the big name manufacturers were moving on too. Ultimately, it's hard to come up with a concrete answer as to why these things are so absent today, but the number of things we touched on probably had at least a minor to at most a major effect on them. Whether you like these things or not, I think they were an incredibly valuable asset for the 2000s kids meals. I sure hope the future of these things leads in the direction of preservation. I found a few attempts at recreating these, though they're not perfect. Kind of like what has been done for the Magnavox Odyssey with Odyssey. Even the simple efforts like that are very helpful. Well, that's all I've got to say. Catch you frame raiders in the next video.